So the works in this show span a period of about nine years. And um, the earliest pieces are the great paintings, and I painted those at a time when it wasn't easy for me to leave the studio or to take on large paintings, large projects. So I was painting what was at hand, and my husband grows these beautiful things in our garden. And so painting grapes is a discipline that artists have engaged in for centuries. And I think the reason that one would paint grapes is to learn how to paint things that are translucent so that you're better prepared to paint the figure. So there are a couple of grape paintings, Vanessa grape paintings, that were painted from life while the grapes were hanging in my studio in the back door of the studio and the sunlight was passing through the grapes in a really beautiful way. And um, in fact, you can see that the grapes are ripening as I'm making the paintings. So some of the grapes are green and then you see them getting darker and darker and darker until some of the clusters are actually deep purple because over a period of days, as the grapes were hanging there, they would actually darken. And the most recent paintings in this exhibition were painted last month, July of 2016, when I was painting plein air on the Hood Canal over by Alderbrook Resort. Then there's an interesting group of paintings that are comprised of diptychs, that is two-part paintings. And the reason that I introduced the diptych as a formal sort of structure for my paintings is that I was thinking about poetry. And um, poets have the license to bring together very dissimilar kinds of images in order to create a new kind of feeling or idea. And so when you look at those paintings, like Elegy, which is a, a poem to honor the dead, I brought together something that's sort of up close and in our present sort of reality, the swinging box, which was actually a bird feeder, and then um, a sort of distant sky that had thunderclouds in it and, and the sun was setting. And so I think in a sort of poetic way that painting speaks about death and the immediacy of death but also the idea that the person is passing over. Um, conspicuous consumption is about the backyard chickens that we had at the time and how if we would throw the compost out into the backyard it was like a banquet or a feast or a celebration rather than just having chicken feed and then I juxtapose that with an image from one of my daughter's birthday parties where her cousin was sort of slumped over the table after eating a lot <laughs> and I couldn't help but be sort of enchanted with sort of the aftermath of the feast. The cake has been cut into their water glasses around and she's still wearing her party hat and she's slumped forward and the party hat points forward toward the cake and the viewer and it sort of reminds me of a beak like a bird. So in a way she's sort of like one of those chickens. <laughs> and. Um, the other painting that's in the diptych series called Genetic Material is um, sort of a play on the discussion in the contemporary life about um, genetics and what you have on the left side of that painting is a picture of my husband with our daughter Arabella as a newborn on his chest. And so genetically they're very close but physically they look very different. Here's an, a middle-aged man with a mustache and a hairy chest, and here's this beautiful, pristine newborn child. Um, and then on the right side, again, our backyard chickens, which um, look to be identical, but genetically are very different. So I was sort of poking fun at the whole idea of the way we think about genetics and that appearances have very little to do with genetic similarity, actually. So. The most important thing is using realism as almost a mode of seduction. First of all, I'm seduced by the imagery, and if it's going to hold my interest for a long period of time, it's probably worth painting. But the other is that 
especially in this day and age of fast moving images, artists have to work really hard to engage the viewer. And I think painting things in a beautiful way, in a realist way, holds the fascination for the viewer still. Even though we have photography and movies, people still walk up to a painting and go, wow, that was painted. Somebody painted that. And as long as that's still operable, I think we have power as painters to, as realist painters, to engage the viewer. I paint because um, nothing else transports me into that beautiful zone of focus and concentration while at the same time activating my intellect, my curiosity. It's very fulfilling on all fronts, physically, mentally, emotionally. It's totally engaging. Um, I never really feel that while I'm constructing a composition or executing a painting or collaborating with a model that there's part of me that's left out that is wondering, well, how come I don't get to play today? <laughs> because I get to use all of me in that very creative and intellectual play.